And if it looks like a bailout, if it acts like a bailout, is it a bailout? A fair and balanced debate on federal aid now flowing to Detroit. Our people in an overwhelming way supported the re-election of this president. And there ought to be a quid pro quo, and you ought to exercise leadership on that. Of course, not just that, but why not? Remember that Detroit Councilwoman calling for a quid, quo, quid pro quo from the Obama administration, something for something? Uh, well, some suggest the White House has actually answered her call now. Despite numerous assurances that the federal government would not get involved in bailing out Detroit, the Obama administration has apparently found $100 million for the Motor City. In all, the city will get nearly $300 million in combined federal and private aid toward a Motown comeback. But the government is not calling it a bailout. Is it or isn't it? Well, joining us for a fair and balanced debate, radio show hosts Lars Larson, host of The Lars Larson Show, and Mark Levine of Mark Levine's Inside Scoop. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you, Shannon. All right, Glad Mark, it, it, it sounds like some kind of bailout. Well, it's not a bailout because these are monies that Detroit was entitled to under the law anyway. They didn't have the best government in the world. They didn't apply for these things. So the money they could have gotten nonetheless. And it's very important that the federal government set a signal. You mentioned they give $100 million and private groups give $200 million. It's a signal that they're not going to let a city that was once the fourth largest in America die. If Detroit is allowed to die, if the abandoned buildings that they want to tear down are allowed to continue, then they will cause even more harm to the federal government and, frankly, to the people of Detroit. All right, so Lars, uh, not, not technically a bailout, but there is federal money flowing that way. No, but he says they're entitled to. What entitles anybody to federal aid? And in this case, the federal government and private groups now are going to throw money into a city that still has the problems that have evolved over the last 50 years. That city has very identifiable problems. It's had Democrat leadership for the last half century. It's had unions that have dominated the city. President Obama declared the city saved before the election last November. And then all of a sudden the city goes bankrupt. You can see where the problems are. Just this weekend the story is breaking that the city for 10 years handed out extra bonuses, $2 billion worth of them, simply because the unions demanded them. And now they're turning to President Obama saying, our people, whatever that phrase means, re-elected you. Now, where's ours? That's a very familiar phrase to a guy from Chicago like the president. Where's mine? Well, now Detroit wants to know where's mine. It's not up to the rest of the taxpayers in America to bail out the failed Democrat and union-driven policies of a city like Detroit. Lars. Mark, let me, let me just first, uh, from Dictionary.com, the source of all things that we need to define in the world says... <laughs> Uh, bailout is an instance of coming to the rescue, especially financially. Isn't that essentially yep. what's happening here? Mark? Well, it depends on what you consider aid to the victims of Katrina or Hurricane Sandy or the tornadoes in Oklahoma or the fires in California. But were, those, night... based, but, but were those based on mismanagement and corruption or natural disasters <laughs> that were completely out of the control of elected leaders? Well, they're based on natural disasters, but they were not out of the control of, of elected leaders. We know, for example, that New Orleans had levees that had the federal government kept up, had, had George Bush repaired the levees, there wouldn't have been the damage in Katrina there was. There has been mismanagement in Shannon. Detroit, I can't deny it, but the heart of the problem in Detroit has nothing to do with the government of Detroit. It has to do with the Shannon. fact that the motor industry, which Mitt Romney and others profited a large amount from, has now gone to Mexico and China where they can find cheaper laborers who they can mistreat more. That's why Detroit's in trouble. And it's got very little to do with, with mismanagement, although that's a little bit oh, of it. Lars, Lars I, I, see the, I see the head shaking uh, over Hurricane Katrina, <laughs> so why don't you start there? Uh, I have to tell you something. I'm glad to hear my friend Mark compare the policies of Democrats to a hurricane or a natural disaster, because actually the comparison is apt. The and destruction remember, of the levees Mark, was not a natural disaster. If you remember, disaster. Mark, if you remember on the levees, the federal money did go to Louisiana, and what happened was an awful lot of Democrat politicians decided to spend it on things other than the levees, oh, and then they true. turned around and blamed George Bush because of their misspending. In a lot of ways, those levee problems are very comparable to Detroit. It's local decisions. So if the federal government and private groups throw extra money at Detroit, but you haven't fixed the essential problem, the leaders of the city and the decisions that they're making. And the, frankly, the people of Detroit The people aren't in charge in Detroit. The, gov the, governor, Rick, uh, the governor of Michigan, who's a Republican, Snyder. is now in charge of Detroit. So you can't even blame the people of Detroit for that. Well, hold Look, on. Detroit He's has troubles now. that are greater than partisan bickering. All right, gentlemen. He's speaking, in charge. Speaking of bickering, we have to leave it there. <laughs> 
<laughs> but Lars and Mark, very good to see you both uh, as we talk about whether a bailout is a bailout or not. Thank you both. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. All right, the halls of the cat.